All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the golden age of knives and talking about what, why I think that this time frame is the golden age, what kind of made it that way, and some of the knives from that golden time. Now, long before there were knives like the Benchmade 535 Bug Out, knives like the famous or maybe infamous Civivi Elementum, there was a time in EDC where knives were maybe a little bit more simple and a little bit less talked about. The community was definitely smaller and knives like the Benchmade 630 Skirmish were out and they were awesome blades. So let's talk about some of the knives and ultimately some of the reasoning behind this time frame um, and why I really think it's the golden age. Now to specify, because I haven't exactly said what time is the golden age for knives, I think in the everyday community or everyday carry community, I should say, um, I really think that it's about 2004 to maybe 2014, you know, uh, definitely that whole time frame of the early 2000s to the, or mid to early 2000s thousands to the early 20 teens um, was really I think the time frame where um, knives as far as EDC goes were kind of at that golden age and it's where you know a lot of your popular knives and knife designs either come from and or kind of um, peaked if you will. So first off you know, undoubtedly, I think there's a little bit of nostalgia for me because that's kind of that, you know, 2010 to 2012 was when I kind of came on the knife scene, started collecting knives and started really getting into knives. So for me, there's definitely a bit of nostalgia because I look back at that time and I'm like, man, I thought those knives were so cool back then. I still think they're cool now. So things like the Sabenza, once again, the 630 Skirmish kind of hold a special place in my heart because these are the knives that like growing up um, or, you know, when I first began collecting knives. These are the knives that I kind of either envied or really wanted. And I was like, man, those are just such cool knives. Probably never get that knife a day in my life. But of course, you know, here we are. Um, anyways, you know, so there's definitely a little bit of nostalgia, but I think really the core summary of it is that in this time frame, I think was the greatest level of innovation. You know, of course, once again, you see things like, um, the Sabenza that is kind of like the knife, you know, it kind of uh, is like the textbook definite textbook definition of what a knife should be but you have things like the flipper knife coming online with things like hinderer you also have hard use knives like the strider kind of coming out they're designed to be used like um sorry pry bars but kind of pry bars you know um so you have a lot of innovation you also at the same time frame have a lot of not just like innovation but the way we use materials once again all of these knives featured you know have strong amounts or large amounts of titanium in them and of course titanium is not a new periodic element but seeing things like titanium used in pocket knives is really new and so you see materials like that you also see things like powdered metals like cpm s30v which once again you know it has existed for a long or not necessarily a long time but for a while um and now it's being integrated into knives for high it's high performance and so you see things like S30V being used uh, as opposed to more traditional steels like D2 or, you know, some of your just even more basic stainless steels like 420HC. Um, in addition to, you also see a lot of the designs really coming on board. Once again, you know, the... Um, the Sabenza kind of is a typical knife, but you see things like recurve blades, you know, really coming out like this 630. You see things um, like, you know, wacky kind of handle or ergonomics like the Strider SNG coming out. You even see knives at this time frame like the uh, Microtech Ultratech coming out and, you know, kind of introducing entirely new styles of knives. So, you know, the uh, Sabenza was kind of the first of its class to use something like a frame lock um, and being a folder. Before this, there was really just liner locks and lock backs and slip joints. But now you see things um, at this time frame, like the 2004 to 2014, you, know, you see things like the OTF really coming out and becoming its own knife. I mean, you, you know, you did see automatic knives before this time frame, but once again, they were kind of cheaper, you know, Chinese gas station styled knives that would fall apart after a week of use. Whereas this thing, you can literally drive through steel and it's going to you know still lock up and unlock just like it would if it was new and so you know you're seeing 
quality really coming into the knife uh, industry and now we see blades that are you know, like I said high quality and so you see things like that coming out you see solid designs you see you know actual knives that are worth collecting i mean people did collect you know kind of you know cheap chinese gas station styled knives before this so obviously there were knife collectors but you see knives that are actually honestly worth collecting worth worth collecting, worth passing down, worth, you know, having in a collection, as opposed to just a whole bunch of cheap Chinese knives that are just so-so. So that's kind of why I see this time frame as like the golden age is you see just a lot of progression. You see a lot of new materials and innovation being applied to the industry. I mean, nowadays, when you look at it, you know, something like this, you know, uh, CRK or Chris Reeve knife, Sabenza with its titanium handle scales, titanium frame lock, you know, this is very common and isn't even that expensive to find a knife now that has very similar styling and build composition. You know, you can get something like a uh, Wii, you can get something like a Wii that is very similar to that, or once again, a Civivi that has a lot of the same materials, but for a fraction of the price of a Chris Reeve. And so realistically, you know, you just don't see a lot of innovation anymore. You don't see a lot of, I mean, you see like new materials, but once again, still a lot of it's titanium frame locks flippers, you know, like at the time in the kind of golden age that I think of, you know, like 2004 to 2014, you know, once again, you know, flipping knives or knives that had flipper tabs on them it was really never heard of, you know, once again, OTFs were kind of known about, but they were really always regarded as kind of cheap, you know, Chinese garbage. Whereas you see things like Microtech coming on uh, line and making really high quality things like the Scarab, the Ultratech, um, and many other OTF designs that really took the world by storm and so i think that that's why you know this time frame mixed with these styles of knives is my favorite time to kind of look back at and why i like collecting older knives like you guys don't necessarily see um you know a lot of these new kind of fad-ish knives like the banter the wee banter i mean i do have a civivi elementum fixed blade but i really am not that interested in the folders um you know you see things like the uh, NAFs Lander coming out, and they're really all very generic looking knives. They're all really not that exciting. They, you know, don't really have any innovation to them. And so while they're not bad products, they're not bad tools as far as like a knife goes, they're not really adding anything exciting to the lineup. And so I think when you look at this time frame of EDC knives and EDC culture as a whole, uh, especially as it relates to knives, you just see so much innovation and so much coming onto the the table you know like I said as far as steels that were previously being used for you know different alternative applications now we're putting them blades for high performance and now you know we see you know titanium that was previously used in very rare you know circumstances and just gen general engineering and stuff and now we're throwing it into knives you know it's pretty cool it's pretty awesome and uh, you know at the same time too I think the cool part about this was that because so little was known about what people would like what people were interested in and when it came to knives like now we know clear and defined path paths and tracks you know people like their tonto blades people like you know certain you know styles of knives um they like their you know titanium folders and stuff they like their titanium frame locks and stuff you know you see all of this and you know people know what they like now but back in the when you know edc knives were start, starting to really come out you know people didn't know so they experimented they tried stuff out and so it ends up leading with a lot of cool designs and stuff that may not be super practical some of it's definitely more practical than others but all of it's really cool and so definitely you know other strong contenders at this time frame you know you did have benchmade once again with the 630 skirmish and many other designs like the griptilian and such but you also had other companies like um like Emerson out there, you know, really delivering lots of cool tools themselves. I still really want to get an Emerson added to the collection. Um, but yeah, you just have a ton of different makers making their own things, doing really cool stuff. And like I said, you just saw a lot of innovation. And it seems like year over year when it came to that kind of golden age in knife making, you know, or in the knife community, you know, you saw like 
each and every year major progressions, major changes. You know, you saw whole new steels that had way different characteristics and performance. You know, like one year D2 was the steel and then the next year S30V was the steel. And so like you see like leaps and bounds in changes. And once again, you kind of can't get that back because we've already crossed those bridges. And to be honest, things like steel, titanium, all of these materials, they do have their upper limits, especially when it comes to alloys. You know, there are only so many elements in the periodic table, so you can only mix so many different metals together to make an alloy that performs. And so, while definitely we continue to see things like Magna Cut and CPM 20CV and others, you know, ultimately you really aren't seeing like huge changes in the way we do things as far as steel goes as far as you know handle materials we don't really see any huge or drastic changes because g10 is well g10 and once again there's only so many ways you can make a plastic or polymer or different type of material for handle and so there's only so many ways to blend elements together to make cool compounds but at the same time too just during that time frame felt like so much was changing Changing. so much was evolving year after year and so I know that you know we would like to continue to see that evolution but part of it really just isn't even possible because once again there are upper limits to materials and we've pretty much hit those upper limits so we're at a really cool stage in EDC knife life at this point but at the same time too it's far more stagnant where you see little incremental changes year by year as opposed to really drastic really wild really crazy changes like we did um, in the 2000s so anyways uh, that is kind of my you know take on the golden age of the knife industry and uh, once again uh, you know, knives are still going to continue to evolve and change and there will be new steels, new handle materials, but I don't think we'll ever get back to that point where things were just changing so rapidly, so drastically, and in such an exciting way. Like it was exciting to be a part of the knife community at that time frame because it felt like things were changing so rapidly and you just wanted to see what would come next, you know, what new innovation was going to set the world on fire. So anyways, it's far more refined now, and that's also not a bad place to be, but it was definitely an exciting time, and that's why I like the knives from that time frame, and why I go out of my way to collect things like the 630 Skirmish, you know, looking at this thing from the outset, you know, it uses titanium handles, S30V blade, beautiful recurve, but you know, there's really nothing super special about this knife, you know, and once again, if I wanted these types of materials, I could easily go over to a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and get the same type of materials obviously in a smaller more compact size but i could get titanium handles for this s30v blade if not better like this already has rex 45 for the steel so you know certainly better steel and uh you know better options than this guy but really it's not about you know the sheer performance or the technology of the tool at this current stage but what that tool really meant when it came out and that's what makes it special to me and i think like Everyone's going to have their own interpretation of the everyday carry community and what they want or what they like. And so for me, that's kind of my interpretation and what I like. You know, I really like these older school knives and what these knives really represented at the time that they were released. Because once again, I was in the community at that time. I was sitting there with bated breath, seeing all the cool knives. And I think it's also cool kind of looking back with that nostalgic um, kind of perspective of once again, you know, looking at knives where it was like, man, you know, those CRK Sabenzas, you know, the Sabenza 21s are so cool, but I'll probably never end up with one. And then, you know, getting to the point where you're an adult and you have money and you can buy them and actually being able to buy those cool knives that you dreamt about. And, you know, same with the Strider SNG, you know, and same with many of the knives that I've added to my collection. Really cool knives that I wasn't sure, you know, like at the time when I was, you know, first saw them unveiled, you know, probably wouldn't ever be able to get them, but now have them in hand and really do love them. So, so anyways, guys, that is the golden age, some knives that go along with it and hopefully enjoyed the video as always. God bless and I'm out.